The title of this podcast is you go in for one thing and you find out that everything needs work. I often hear this uh, as what, what people tell me when they go in for a physical exam. They'll go in for a physical exam and then they discover that, hey, I got all these other things I need to attend to. You know, well, that's actually a gift because you might not have uh, been made wise to other aspects of your health that need attention. People will say the same thing when they take their car into a mechanic. Now, let's hope that the mechanic is an honest one. But but let's say that you have an honest mechanic. I went in for the brakes. Then I found out that I've got an alternator problem and I've got you know a transmission issue. Well, isn't it fortuitous that you found out that there were other issues that required your attention? And the most recently, how that's shown up for me was with the sport of pickleball. You heard me talk about pickleball before. There are a lot of life lessons on the court in pickleball. It's actually helped make me a better person because instead of being consumed with uh, with the score and whether uh, my partner or I were making mistakes that caused us to lose, I flipped that on the head so I continue to have fun because the other way I wasn't having fun. And what I made it about was, was I a good teammate? When I make it about that, I always have a good time because I'm, I'm totally in control of being a good teammate, regardless of what my partner does or what my opponent does. And so in this case with pickleball, I got a coach a few months ago, a new coach. And in having this new coach, I went in and said, hey, listen, I didn't play tennis before. The area that I need to work on, I need to work on my forehand. My forehand needs some work. I never swung a ba baseball bat. I didn't play softball. I didn't play tennis, ping pong, racquetball, you name it. If it involves a paddle, a racket, or bat, I haven't played it. So I never developed a skill to be able to do a forehand. He's like, no problem. But before we do that, let me see the other parts of your game. So he has me up at the net and I'm doing dinking. He notices that needs work. So let me see your forehand, dink, it needs work. The backhand, dink, needs work. What about your fast hands in case you're at a firefight fight at the at the net? Mm, that needs work too. How do you handle overheads and putaways? Oh, I think I'm good at those. Nope, I'm not good at those either. That needs work. And so the list just keeps growing and growing. What about your drops? Oh, I think my drops are great. He looks at the drops like, nope, they need work too. And your serves, oh, you know what? I got just a simple serve, it's really effective. Do a couple serves, nope, that needs work too. So it became this uh, really rich experience of just, you know, of, of seeing like, oh my God, there's a lot of things that I can work on. And fortunately, I learned a long time ago to really fall in love with practice, to really fall in love with drilling. When I find out that for me to have a certain outcome or increase the likelihood of having a certain uh, outcome means that I have to do something repeatedly, sometimes for months, sometimes for years, sometimes for a lifetime, I have learned very quickly to say yes to that and not to make it an issue. So if someone says, hey, Keith, you got to work out the rest of your life to maintain, you know, a uh, healthy physical form. Okay, I wish it was a different way, but it's not. I'll do it. And then it's never a problem for me anymore. Keith, in order to look and feel a certain way and have healthy organs, you need to eat a certain way. Really? That means I can't eat that anymore? Not if you want to have this other thing. Okay, I can do it. And I'll never give it another second thought. I am done. I'm all in. And the same thing has happened with pickleball. And it's become the most fun experience because I don't see the coach as a coach. I see him as a friend who is taking time out of their day, out of their schedule to help me be better. Now, I'm paying them, of course, but why do I let that get in the way of having this really connected friendship, this connected connection, this, this, this really fulfilling connection with someone else? So I don't, get, I don't let money get in the way. 
I treat people as if I'm not paying them. And then, man, you just watch the relationship take off when there is no expectation that they have to be, uh, uh, that, that, that it's business, that it's transactional, but it becomes relational. And that is a rich relationship when you do that with people. And I'm super blessed because people in Tubi Read do that for me every single day. Like the people that that run our classes from Julie to Sharon to Christina uh, and, and Amy, like none of them get paid, but they treat it as, not as transactional. They treat, even though they're giving up their time, they treat it as relational about contribution. So I try to do the same thing and it, it makes it really easy to be giving in kind to my coach in the same manner in which they're giving in kind to me. It's a beautiful thing. So I have really embraced this idea of, okay, I'm going in for one thing. It's likely I'll be coming out uh, or, or discovering that I need work on everything. And that's also the way the practice works, not just on the pickleball court, but it's the same thing in relationships. You're going to have to talk about one thing that's on your mind. And then you learn that there are other things that also need attention. Not about the other person, but about you, about having compassion, about what unconditional love really means, about accepting people for who they are and who they're not, about allowing the relationship to unfold the way that it does, for it to flourish, or accepting that maybe, you know, the season or the sun is setting on the relationship and being grateful for the time that you've had together. That's also part of it. And so you start to really begin to see and be grateful for all these other things that are opening up for you. Oh, I'm, oh and you learn that, oh, I'm not open. I'm not forgiving. I'm not empathetic. Uh, oh, I need it to be my way, not someone else's way. I'm controlling. I act this way when I don't get what I want. You start to see that all these things that open up, that become visible to you of the areas that you still need to grow in. Just like all the things that the coach saw for me on the pickleball court, all the things that needed attention. And thankfully I had someone there who was help, who was who was available to help me work on those things. And so when I saw him yesterday for a lesson, I thanked him for investing in my game and contributing to our friendship. I mean, and we're on the court and he is working me and we are laughing and having the best time along the way. Now in the past, if I came in for one thing and he was telling me about all the other things that I should consider working on, I would have been disappointed with the state of my game probably that I can't do anything right. And I likely would have been like, what is this guy doing? Setting himself up to have more lessons? What, we're going to be, a, we, we, this is going to be a lifelong arrangement in which I'm paying him every week for a lesson for the next, you know, for the rest of my life? No, I'm not doing this. I came in for one thing. Let's work on the one thing. Well, that's one th way to go into a relationship or to go into uh, uh, a business agreement if it ha you know if that's how you want to look at it that's one way to do it that's not fun though you're not going to grow that way you're there might as well get everything out of it and i certainly have i watched my game really level up and i'm excited about it continuing to level up because of the 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 watchful eye of this person that cares so much about my game that they were looking and just making me aware of other areas that could use some work. And they didn't do it like you need to work on this. They said, hey, listen, you know, there's some other areas that we can work on too, but we'll take care of your forehand first. And if that's the end of, a, of our uh, business relationship, great. You know, you will walk away with a great forehand. Uh, and if it's not, and you want to do more, that's great too. We'll do more. And do the same thing in your relationships. Do the same thing in the workplace is be grateful when people make you aware of other areas that you can grow and work on. After all, it's your goal. I didn't just say, hey, I want to be, have the best forehand, you know, 
uh, in the world, I said, I want to be a really good player. Help me be a really good player. Well, a really good player is not just one trick pony. A really good player is very good in all of the necessary skills, footwork, communication, being a good teammate, hitting multiple shots that are necessary to be successful in the game. And the same thing as relationships. You're not just good leading in relationships. You're good following. You're great at being a partner. That's what it is. You know, you're you're unconditional in your love and support of others, even if it doesn't include you moving forward. You're grateful for those things. And I've had to do that in my relationships. I've had to be like, hey, you know, someone said, hey, Lisa and Keith, you know, I think we come to the end of the road, you know, with this to be read thing. I'm going to go a different route. And in the beginning, you know, my ego got bruised, heart hurt a little bit. I observed it, let it go and realize that I'm probably going to have this conversation again in the future. And I don't want to suffer over it. So I'm so grateful that I'm getting this experience now. So I know how to deal with it in the future. And I've become really good at it. Been expressed gratitude for people for the time that we've been connected. And when they choose to move on, I have I, I have accepted their choice of moving on. So I just want to put this question out to you. But the next time or, or, or this thought, the next time you go in for one thing, and then you soon are made aware that everything or more things need work. Be grateful for that. And then start working on it.